Hey, how you doing? Storm Norman here. I know it occurred to me the other day, I don't ever tell you my name. Storm Norman's my nickname. That's how you find me on Facebook. But check it out. This is the regular mic on the camera. Now we're going to plug this in. Listen to the difference. How's that? You can hear me now, can't you? I know, I was impressed by it too. But, okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, I'm gonna do this video because I just did it and it was not, there was some stuff in there I didn't like, so. We're gonna do today, abusers of themselves and mankind. So don't let that, you know, don't let, you're like, what? But we're gonna do that today, my last video in this series. Uh, shine out here at the kingdom. I'm going through these sins that I found in 1 Corinthians and there's a passage in Galatians, I believe, that lists the sins that Paul says, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what he's saying is, these people who, have not, who do these sins and have not repented of them, because like I've been trying to tell you in every video, these sins by themselves, they don't take you to hell. What takes you to hell is choosing these sins. I don't know why I did that, touching it, like you can see. But the, choosing these sins over salvation that God offered through Jesus. You repent of your sins, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you start following Him, start doing, start reading this, start doing what's in it. You're good to go. But if you choose these sins over that, and also, this, this be clear, you can't have both either. Choose these sins over that, you're going to hell. And you can't choose these sins and Jesus either. It just doesn't work that way. And uh, we see that all the time. <laughs> Anybody that says, well, I'm a gay Christian. You can't be. You can't be. You can't choose sin and Jesus that they're diametrically opposed they don't go together but moving on i'll read this passage that i got today's topic from galatians or first corinthians 6 9 know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But you know, I've been leaving this verse out. Let me just throw it in there. Verse 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I, I should have been putting that in there all along. These people he's talking to in Corinth, and according, it just, I don't have time to get into it, but if you go into your, uh, go do some research, Corinth was like the Las Vegas of the Middle East that was just known for sin. But all these people in the church in Corinth had committed these sins, but they had been washed clean by the blood of Christ. They had been forgiven. So keep that in mind. The day we're going to do abuses of themselves and mankind, and it comes from the word arsenicoitus. And I have no clue whatsoever if I said that correctly. Even though when I looked it up, it actually told you how to say it, and I should have wrote that down. But I was like, oh, how hard can it be? But uh, arsenicoitus. And if you have a Strong's and you want to look it up in your Strong's, just because I did too, so and I happen to have the number here. It's G733, if you want to look that up. And it means sodomite or homosexual. Sodomite being the word originally used. Homosexual being the word we use nowadays for it. But, uh, and you know what that is. I don't need to explain that to you. But notice it says abusers of themselves and mankind. So I saw this in another guy's video. Look up the first... If you got your concordance or however it is you do it, look up the first usage of the word mankind. 
and it takes you to Leviticus 18.22, first time the word mankind was ever used. Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind. It is abomination. That's a pretty strong word to describe a sin. Now keep in mind, God hates all sin the same. All sin equally. But this is, I might be wrong, but this is the only one I know of that he considers an abomination. That's a pretty strong word. So what's the word abomination mean? It means hated. It means detestable. So like, imagine you're watching the news one night and uh, they talk about somebody got arrested, he's a pedophile, and they go through details about his crimes and what he did. And they would be in a, <laughs> I mean, if you're a normal human being like the rest of us, that person would be an abomination to you. You would hate them. They would be detestable to you. And this natural human reaction to it, but that's what it means. I mean, hated, detestable, disgusting. God just don't like it. Abominations. Not even just anything he calls an abomination is something that he hates. But it ain't, and that's a verse a lot of people will throw around. And if you throw that verse around, this is what gets a lot of people. You say that verse from Leviticus and then they'll start quoting other verses in Leviticus about uh, getting tattoos and all kind of nonsense. But that is another video for another time. So, it's not just condemned in the old, it's condemned in the new as well. In Romans, chapter 1, 26 and 27. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. So, Paul's condemning it right here in his letter to the Romans. So it's not just there in the Old Testament, it's in the New too. Now here's, 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 here's the thing I want you to hear. Just like any sin, there comes, a, like if, if you're a sinner and you know God's dealt with your heart before and any preacher will tell you, he doesn't have to deal with your heart tomorrow. He might, he might deal with your heart for the next 10, 15, 20 years. You don't know that. And trust me, if you're dealing with your heart, you won't know it. But if he's dealing with your heart and you're just constantly, no, no, no. I'm not going to repent. I'm not going to do it. He can stop tomorrow. He's not obligated to keep. He, he's not obligated to keep putting conviction on your heart and dealing with your heart. He could stop tomorrow if he wanted to. <coughs> there comes a time, a point, where he'll just be like, you know what? And that's what we get here, and what I have called the point of no return point of no return Romans 128 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient so what does that word mean what does reprobate mean it means abandoned it means unqualified it means rejected you have reached a point when God turns you over to a reprobate mind, you have reached a point where God is just done with you. It's like you're going to hell and you're going there as fast as you can and God's been trying to and you just, he's like, you know what? Do what you do. Do, it, do whatever it is you want to do and let it take you right to hell. Go ahead. He, he washes his hands of you, so to speak. Like when Jesus was executed and Pilate came out and said, I don't see nothing wrong with the guy. Washed his hands of him. Not my problem no more. 
And that's what God does when you reach the point of return and he turns you into turns you over to a reprobate mind. Because even as we've seen in the in the passage I read earlier in uh First Corinthians it says such were some of you so some of the people in the church in Corinth had been guilty of homosexual you know relations they've done it so some people will go around and say once you've committed a homosexual act you're done but that's not what the Bible says as long as it's still your conscience is still speaking to you like when you commit a homosexual act and you're just like I hate living this lifestyle in the same way like an alcoholic would do the same thing he'll get drunk and then he'll wake up and be like oh I don't want to get drunk no more I hate this but he'll go out and get drunk again and same way with the people living in that lifestyle of homosexuality some uh, some people they'll do it and they'll be like this is wrong. I know it's wrong and I shouldn't be doing this and they feel bad about it. Their conscience, you know, bothers them about it. So that's a good sign if that's happening to you. If your conscience is bothering you about it, probably a good indicator that you've not been turned over to reprobate yet. And uh, another argument people will make. Oh yeah, I wanted to clear that up too. Uh, how you know if you've been turned over to a reprobate or somebody you know has been. Last verse in Romans chapter 1. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, they know what God has to say about it. They know God don't like it. They know it's a sin. They know that. They... Not only do the same, the, the act itself, but have pleasure in them that do that. So not only are they engaged in this sinful lifestyle, but they also look at other people and go, oh, that's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, we're, we were born this way. They weren't, by the way. You're not born that way. We were born this way. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just love. It's not, it's not love. And... Uh, Everything's fine and good. So, if you get to a point where you don't see anything wrong with it, you know, it's just all fine and good, you've reached reprobate stage. God has washed, He's flipped the switch on your conscience, turned it off, whatever. He's, he's done with you. So, now next, people say, Jesus never condemned homosexuals. And I mentioned the video Body Balcom did on this. And we see, uh, like in Leviticus, where God was telling Moses that this is a sin. It's an abomination. Like I read to you a minute ago. That's God talking to Moses. Paul, like we just read Romans, Paul to the Romans, he was being inspired in his writings by the Holy Spirit. So that's two parts of the Trinity who are, who are against homosexuality. See? So don't tell me that Jesus has a problem with it. Okay? He's against it too. He, he, if, if, if God's against it, then Jesus is against it because they're not in disagreement. Okay? They're not in disagreement. They don't disagree with each other. They're all in complete agreement so don't tell me that Jesus never condemned it so what if he didn't but that's the video for today I hope that helped you out just remember if you're living in that lifestyle and it's eating you up repent just repent of it come on back you know repent of your sins and believe in Jesus put your faith in him I hope that cleared up. I hope it wasn't a jerk. I got told I was kind of a jerk in the last video, so I tried to be a little nicer in this one. But till next time, take up your cross, carry on.